Hello Ratbags, it's Jade. Welcome to the reaction and breakdown of the ARK Survival Evolve 2 trailer reveal. This was shown off at the Game Awards. Obviously, I'm going to talk you through what I think about it and then we're going to dissect the trailer and look at all the stuff we can gain from it. But breaking news, literally as I just finished my breakdown of it, I saw a kerfuffle on Twitter. It looks like the ARK sequel will be an exclusive launch title for Xbox and PC only. Now this doesn't sound as scary as maybe as you think. There was some confusion and I'm going to clear it up for you. It will be coming to PlayStation, but it's going to be a while after Xbox and PC, just like the first one. Now this was confusion because Aaron Greenberg, the guy in marketing at Xbox, put this tweet out. We are excited to be working with the Studio Wildcard team and bring Arc 2 starring Vin Diesel exclusively to Xbox Series X S consoles. However, very briefly afterwards, both the community manager and one of the producers for Art Survival Evolve, Dolly, gave a clarification that it's going to be launching exclusively on Xbox and PC. And the key word there is launch. You know Microsoft are going to be doing this a lot. They're going to pump up their games, try and get some more gains from players on PlayStation. So it's often the case they're going to say exclusive, but reality is it's a timed exclusive. Now, it's not too unusual. This isn't too much of a shock. Do you know why? Because always in the plans, Wildcard have probably timed this as an early access title. This is not going to be a fully fledged game. They've said it in the past, they'll use early access again. They had early access for the whole, most of the time of Arc, obviously being on Xbox. And then it came out. And even before, actually, they did release it on PlayStation while it was technically still in early access. So it seems shocking. It seems a little bit out of place. How can you not have the sequel out on a PlayStation? But it is very much like the first one. It will come to PlayStation, but it's going to be exclusive at launch for a amount of time first on Xbox and PC. So hopefully that clears things up for you. If you're a PlayStation fan worried that you won't be able to play or try Arc 2, it will happen, but it's just going to be a bit longer. Now let's get back to the breakdown that I'd already recorded. It is a cinematic trailer. Cinematic trailers are meant to give us a clue, a hint about what to come and what to expect. However, the Wildcards dev official channel put out a tweet saying that a lot of the assets are from their game. So things like the actual terrain, maybe the locations, the creatures and some of these NPC enemies could all be in the game. And yes, Vin Diesel will be starring in Art Survival World 2. I've got some thoughts and feelings about that. I am going to take you through it. Let's go. Arc 2 Breakdown. So I'm going to save my opinion for the end of the video. Let's just break this down slowly. I've run the video quite slowly and we'll take a look at all the new creatures. Look at this Snapdragon style piranha plant. That's pretty cool. Looks more like a little bug than maybe something you'll have, possibly a shoulder pet. FYI, I'm making a lot of assumptions based on the history of Ark and what I think is going to happen. We'll talk about the capability for taming and riding and what kind of game it's going to be towards the end. But anyhow, obviously we've got Tribesmen. We've got lots of Tribesmen. Originally I was worried it'd be a single player game, but I think this really shows it is still going to be a multiplayer game. Of course, the argument for that against is that if it's a single player game or something along them lines, then maybe these are just NPCs, but I don't think so. We saw the young girl touching the egg, so taming is still going to be a part of the game, or at least getting these eggs from certain locations. Beautiful lush environments. Wildcard have always done exceptional work with the environments and the biomes. It's probably some of the best features of the maps and designs of it. Obviously, straight off the bat, very primitive armor sets. Like you're looking at levers, you're looking at sort of lizard levers and stuff like that. We've got going on here, carrying your resources and your items on a stick and holding them resources in a bag. And then we've got NPC enemies, mobs. These creatures look like they will be an enemy that we're going to come across often and we're going to have to be wary of them as they're quite strong. Humanoids, yes. Again, I'm going to talk about where I think this game is set, but I do think it's a sequel and not a prequel. If you take a very closer look at the spear tip there, that was actually a climbing pickaxe by the looks of things. That's what I saw when I looked at it. So I definitely think this is a sequel for many other reasons too. So obviously banding together, making sure we're getting ready for these guys who've got even more primitive sort of armor pieces. Again, made out of looking bits of skin and sort of that woven kind of knit armor pieces like together 
Hopefully this signifies character customization, the prominence of the tattoos, the various different types of tattoos and colorings and markings that you can have and the different types of hairstyles. It's looking very much a case of showing this off. This is what we're really seeing by showing the tribes in that 360 view how different they can all look and hopefully, thank God, not like the ugly thing we have currently with the main game. Now obviously they're frightened but they're not necessarily terrified. We can see these guys have got incisors, so they are obviously eaters of humans maybe, it's not just about attacking them. You can see the great big horns of the creatures behind them. So these guys are dino hunters as well, maybe we'll come across these guys hunting dinosaurs down. Of course the headpiece is very reminiscent from some of the skins you were able to unlock during the base game for doing certain things. And the combat here, if it's kind of on par, kind of give us a clue, is that there may be a little bit more reliance on hand-to-hand -hand combat. Again, always been one of what our cards and arcs weakest links is the combat in the game. I'm not a huge fan of the way the style have done this. You can see from the combat as well that he doesn't actually hit the enemy. It's all very much a case of going to hit him and then not actually finishing it off. A very odd choice to show off the reveal for your next stage of your, you know, your franchise, your game for me. Imagine if there are more cursed reactions with different weapons, like when you have a spear, you'll actually be able to hold it two-handed. That would be excellent if you can have that feature in the sequel, rather than just stabby stabby and doing the same action, whether it's a sword or a spear. It'd be really cool if they've gone out there with this combat. The spear looks like it does almost some sort of extra damage there, or maybe it was just the light catching it, almost like electrical or a charge, but maybe that's reading a bit too much into it. So obviously these guys are pretty strong, they're taking out a buff, Vin diesel here too his eyes seem to be pretty dark here as well later on we'll come to a bit where it shows that maybe some of these are clones and that vin diesel is an actual clone himself by now if you don't know his name is santiago and he is a character from the lore of arc survival evolved and apparently his uh, gravestone is situated on extinction now I've took an actual still shot here, hopefully we're going to get a better quality video tomorrow trailer and I might do this again but that looks like an archaeopteryx to me Later on in the trailer, we know some dinosaurs are making a return, or they look very similar. Well, that's what I'm seeing from here in this very jungle wooded area. That looks like an Archaeopteryx style creature to me. Maybe a variation, a slight difference, but that's sort of the vibe I'm getting from it. Maybe a tiny bit bigger or slightly longer neck. Of course, what next that pops out isn't a regular T-Rex or dinosaur. It looks like a souped-up crossbreed or version. A little bit maybe like an Albasaurus or just an amped-up T-Rex. Absolutely phenomenal and huge, but definitely some sort of hybrid and not just your regular T-Rex. What really strikes me throughout this whole cinematic trailer is that there are no dinosaurs being ridden. It doesn't look like dinosaurs are being ridden. Now they're taming them because they've got the eggs or there's an importance in getting the eggs but maybe that's for preservation. Oh, these are just some of the things that are going through my mind a little bit. But at the moment we've not seen anything to say that you can ride some of these creatures and obviously the big bad one here like the T-Rex. I think that would be a disservice to the game. It's the main core feature for me but I've been showing you guys recently that the developers have spoken about ripping up the framework for ARK and really changing how it works. But anyhow. Lots of really bad blood effect there, I've got to say. This is apparently rendered in-game using game assets with the mocap performances. So or the in-game engine, I have to say. Different types of weapons. You've got like the bone axe there. So that's something else. And obviously Vin Diesel's got his own smaller sort of hatchet style. Obviously, I will still keep calling Finn Diesel, even though he's probably should be known as Santiago. Different types of armor there again as well, fur armor on these guys. It would be great if we could actually get loot from them, if we're going to be killing these guys and actually taking their armors and their pieces from them. Picking up the, the actual spear again, again, I still think that looks like the blade from a climbing pick. I know they're more curved, but it's got that, I don't know, it just looks a bit different than just your average sort of metal spear. And apparently all you need is one spear to take on this huge hybrid T-Rex. I think it's because I've slowed it right down, but it looked like the spear almost transforms. I do think that's just the way the side effect of the, the, the action's going on, and it doesn't actually do that. But yeah, again, we've got a more regular spear here. This is obviously your typical stone spear. Gonna fire it out with this guy while we hide. Are there gonna be children in the game? Is it gonna be part of the story? Again, these are questions we're gonna to have to answer a bit later on. We're not gonna have the answers to right now. But again, big bad here with the saber tooth skull. So saber tooth, I'm guessing, are gonna be some part of the game as well. 
it's really hard to be totally objective here. I am going to put a lot of my assumptions and what I feel about it, and that could be wrong. I'm, I don't mind that. So don't get too salty because I'm saying stuff and you might not agree with me. Let me know what you think, obviously, if you disagree, or if you do agree, maybe you can flesh it out a little bit more. But obviously, as we're protecting this girl, it's really important. She's someone close to me. Is it going to be that relationship like God of War with boy? Now it's going to be girl. But... Vin Diesel, this man, taking them all out and then obviously still on the run. So that spear didn't actually do too much to this huge mutated cross variant. And here we've got a bit of action again, taking on this guy. Are we going to be adding him pale enemies and keep him in space? Or is that just more liberties with the artistic style from the cinematic trailer? And this poor dude's not having a very good time. His ambush has gone completely wrong. You see, quite mottled teeth there. Are they humans that have been exposed to elements? Is that something that's gone on here? And they've malformed and transformed into these creatures that now feed on whatever they can get their hands on, whether it's dinosaurs, smaller creatures, or humans. The next bit is really going to reveal a lot about the story and why I think it's a sequel and not a prequel. But we'll get to that in a second we're in the cave. But yeah, the big creature here taking him on. So that T-Rex creature style could be in the game as that kind of model. It will be that kind of variant. And that is the kind of look for it. They've just animated it a lot to obviously get it into this trailer right now. Again, I don't doubt it, but it does look like some of the topography could change. That'd be great if you could cause stuff like that to happen. Maybe make rocks fall down and take out dinosaurs and stuff like that too. That'd be really interesting. But here's where we get a lot of answers. There is tech here. There is elemental tech. There's Genesis tech or mention of it. We get our first clear indication that we are still a survivor with the quotation in our wrists. The implant is still really important in the game, even though we've kind of various stages taken it off, even if it was just a VR simulation. So you've got technological light in here. You've got these magical rings that are popping up and smaller rings around it highlighting or being sort of walls to highlight and showcase some of the stuff we're doing there is going to be by looks of things maybe a mission structure here they're trialing it we know that missions aren't going to take place in genesis 2 in the same way they did in genesis 1 there'll be separate spaces now you can see the creatures being ridden here and she's holding on to them and touching them in reverence and saying like it's great this is what our forebearers used to do our, our ancient ancestors and hlna is in the middle that's why it's a sequel and not a prequel guys an obelisk there at very first i thought this was a prequel sort of game but as soon as i see that hlna symbol and seeing the stuff that's going on around it it does so show to me that this is a sequel for the law veterans out there of course santiago was around hundreds maybe thousands of years ago so what exactly has happened how comes he's here now well it does look like there's going to be clones but we'll get to that in a second obviously you've got various different types of dinosaurs there and we do see a big huge one like the brontosaurus at the very end so we know they're making a return we can see the quetzals there as well again this is what happened their reverence real reverence here so maybe this isn't going to be the same situation it's what makes me worry we might not be able to ride dinosaurs again a bit hearsay but just putting it out there What's more interesting is taking a look at the right hand side pillar and you can see the ring and that looks a bit like the halo ring from the Genesis 2 reveal. Now I haven't spent too much time looking into that, what that ship is or the lore behind it, but you can clearly see the hands reaching up for it as well. And again, another HLNA, it does look like that ring is in space. So it's kind of telling the story of fight for survival, dinosaurs battling each other, HLNA is prominent in it. And then we've got next to it the next part of the story, which is the Genesis ring returning to Earth, if I get that right. So another reason why it's set in the future and not a prequel. And then we're actually going to see plenty of words. There's loads of details being shown here in terms of like what this guy knows. And he does know this technology. He knows how to use it. He's pretty adept at going through it all. But this might be her first time being in this cave or she hasn't been in this cave a while. Buddies, my rat bags in Discord have told me that Santiago cloned himself and he also saved HLNA before the corruption took hold. And this was way back when. So this is why there are like millions of little Vin Diesels possibly running around. But it's really evident here as well when he touches this tablet. You'll see some of the marks and actually Vin Diesel's face and the words that cloning is there too. Obviously, the bio sequencer, the DNA sequencer, we've seen that at the end of Ark, the main game, as you go through Ascension, and it looks very reminiscent to that, that same thing. But the technology's there for sure. 
I've pulled it once more just to show you guys. The genetic sequence is complete. We know it's Daniel Costa Santiago or DA Costa. We know we've got something called the imprinting and that says that's incomplete. Now, believe it or not, this says to me that there will be classes or there will be certain types of survivor with certain pre-stats that you'll be able to choose from. Engrams, obviously, are always your, your blueprints, your stuff that you unlock. And so the engram imprinting is incomplete. So maybe there'll be survivors without it, or it's a case of that you learn the engrams again, just like you did in the original game. And it's just showcasing that you haven't still got to that stage yet. Of course, cloning access is restricted. Cloning's been a part of Ark since early access days when they brought in the clone chamber for dinosaurs, which I've never really had much use for. And of course, we know it's a big part of the story for Genesis as well. Now, it looks like this scanning of Santiago is actually revealing the true Santiago. It's not just giving you information about yourself. It's actually showing where he lived. He was from the 24th century. He was in charge of strategy. He was creative and he had engineering. They were his aptitude traits. So maybe there will be, like I said, them traits that you can have possibly. Maybe reading a bit too much into it. It also obviously has the Federation listed there as well, which is a big part of the Genesis 2 reveal. And then the next section reveals even more. We get to see, obviously, what the specimen ID. So he's looking literally at like his father in a way. And then there's various different ways that are going to show stuff, calling the purge. So you can see here the purge, the historical archive, the simulation data, the system access logs, the performance records, the dynamic library, and the engram library. So these feel like these are going to be menus and systems that we might be able to upgrade. Like the dynamic library alongside the engram library shows me that that's going to be a way of measuring something. Like dynamic means to be in movement or to be versatile, to be moving or to have some sort of velocity, etc. And with the library being out, I feel like that is going to be something like additional like some sort of new system to have points and stuff again all summarizations guys take it with a pinch of salt now vin Groot says lights out old friend here so he's used to these he's been around he's seen these stations before or it's a case of coming in just to warn and be quiet because the big dinosaur is there and they want to keep it a little bit quiet and keep everything a little bit sort of secret and hidden. Is that going to be a base area or a hub area that you'll come and return to to do hand in with quests, do stuff like tracking stuff that's going on? And then we've got some more creatures very much looking like a tropio. Obviously a huge landscape, very looking similar to a little bit like Crystal Isles. Very much that kind of landscape. But an overall arch, it looks like they are constructs that have eroded with time and have actually fallen down, particularly the one in the top right-hand corner. And obviously, we're going to start cutting away to the actual logo itself. But yeah, you get what I'm saying with that one. You can see it's definitely a fallen over. It's definitely one of the big constructs. And that's the logo. Very different, very minimal, very, very different. Set in the future, of hundreds, maybe even thousands of years, when all the arcs have fallen on Earth. Last side note as well about kids, Atlas was meant to have children, but they've not implemented it yet. So it's an idea they've played around with. This could be the next phase of that. So that's my analysis so far. I'll do as much as I can to delve deeper into it when we get the high res trailer tomorrow. Now, what do I think about it? It left me a bit shocked at first. I know I've spoken recently about how in previous interviews they're going to rip up the framework, as I mentioned earlier, how they want to offer something very different with Arc 2 to Arc 1, how it's got to be something so that you don't have all this baggage with you, like dinosaurs and buildings and stuff. So clearly, if the game's set thousands of years in the future, then yeah, it makes sense. You're not going to have your favourite dinos with you. But they've still got to make it different. So what if they're making it different by not having tames as such, not in the same way we used to? Or maybe the reliance on taming creatures isn't going to be as strong maybe there is going to be much more of a focus on hand-to-hand -hand combat and playing against these npc enemies honestly when this first came out i was like now nah, this isn't arc it's just vin diesel what game is this this is awful mainly because i just don't like the cgi i really think that getting actors faces in certain things sometimes works in this instance it looks like it's been rushed it feels like i'm watching a ad for just a really cheap mobile game like you know one of them ones where it pops up like the walking dead maybe i'm being harsh it's probably a bit better than that the environments are great the models of the npcs are great the dinosaurs are great but vin diesel himself just looks really wrong it's just something up with it I'm also not a big fan of Vin Diesel. I think there's a million actors you could have got to play a part in Ark that didn't need to be super famous and big. And I just feel like he... 
might have a great voice and if he's going to be giving us quests and if he's going to be someone we come into contact with obviously as the main clone maker of his face being on these sort of directories that we'll find in these caves then it makes sense have his voice in there have him guiding us along i like that idea but i don't want to play as vin diesel i don't want to be a clone of vin diesel or have it that i can be his model if i choose to i don't want to be him going through story sections i don't know i just don't like the idea of that one i prefer having my survivor as my survivor something i curate and not put onto the face on the body of someone else that might not make much logical sense, but yeah, I just, if it was someone else, maybe I could get behind it. But with Vin Diesel, it just looks a bit off. And yeah, I just don't rate him as a great actor. As soon as I see this as well, I was worried like, oh my god, it's a single player game. How can they do this? How can they go from a multiplayer game to a single player game? This would be like, I've never heard of this before. Sure, I have a side game, go off in a new direction for a side project, and then you still do the same old. But this would be new territory for a game franchise to do this. But then I thought about it a bit more rationally, and I took a look at some of the stuff. And yeah, it's still going to be an open world game, guys. They've said it's going to have linear but different uh, a linear story but are still an open world so i guess that means we'll be able to choose how and when we take part in some of these interactions if this is what's going to happen where we trigger these cutscenes. they're trying they're doing their best to make arc a bit more fleshed out and give it that triple a spin i like the 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 enthusiasm there i like the ambition but wildcard i've never been too great at getting it just over the line as as perfected it's always a bit rough around the edges always a bit broken and I don't know, I feel like adding story beats like of this calibre might start really exposing how how poor Ark does run sometimes. And I don't know, I just I'm really apprehensive. I, I don't mind story. I like the idea of Helena feeding us quests during um, Genesis part one and stuff. I don't want that to inform my gameplay in an open world game where I'm playing multiplayer or I'm playing with my friends. I mean, I play mostly single player, I guess. I guess a lot of you guys too. And I think Wildcard probably have realised that over the years, a lot of people still actually play Ark as a single player game or very limited with only a couple of people from their family or friends. Believe it or not, that's the most popular way. PvE and single player is played more than PvP. Fact, go and look it up on the devs' Twitter bios and stuff. Uh, anyway, opening up gorgeous landscapes gorgeous biomes i like this but yeah i'm worried about the lack of showing any dinosaurs being ridden it's very different to what we've seen in the past in their game trailers so yeah logo's good minimalistic but yeah very nervous but also a little bit excited about what the future could hold for the game i've covered the arc for five years this december five years over two and a half thousand videos nearly so many hours put into this game so many hours played in it maybe not as much in the last 18 months two years i've delved out a little bit more but arc's always going to be a special part of me and i just want to find a way to reconnect to the game that i used to love but i just got so sick of the stuff that goes around the game whether it's the problems and issues the community being upset and the developers sometimes just not being 100 percent what i want them to be uh so yeah interesting times I'm, i'll be excited for this but yeah i'm apprehensive about vin diesel I, I, I will just keep saying it because it just i'm still in shock you can go and check out my reaction video which i've posted separate it's full of swear words and i will always keep you up to date though as i'm the home of survival whether it good bad and very actually out there like arc 2 is definitely going to be one thing i really like though is maybe return to more primitive stuff i really love the idea of that and if this does that then i can put up within diesel for sure let me know what you think about my breakdown and i'll see you at bags very soon